fucking were up here? I don't know. I thought you were going to tell me. I thought you were going to tell me, Kate. But I bet you got something to say. We have a very special speaker. We do. I'd like to invite here. Do you want to do you want to stand up here? Yeah. I'd like to invite our special speaker up to the front here now with us. Everybody give a round of applause. <laughs> I'm so honored to be up here to be able to tell you guys about this amazing lady standing in front of us. Those of you probably, most of you probably do not know, she actually was in my first ever group when I graduated high school at the other church that I was at. I got to have this girl in my youth group what? and she was the craziest person I've ever met, <laughs> but she was so fun and so wild. And it has been such an honor to be able to watch her grow in her faith over the last five years of me knowing her. She's a completely different person now. She's still crazy. Don't, don't worry. She's still got that part. But she has grown immensely. And today she's going to be sharing her testimony with you guys and getting confirmed. So it is a very exciting day for her. And I'm going to let Ernie do a little introduction. Oh, my word. I got to get down here with Laura. You see, Lauren's my buddy. She's my pal. I love this girl right here. And I have from the very start. She came in as a freshie. You all know what a freshie is? <laughs> she came in as a freshie. She was about this tall, didn't say many words, and giggled a lot, right? She'd sit there, right there on that chair with her friend that she brought, and they would just kind of giggle. And then, then she'd look at her cell phone. i go, now, Lauren, we don't, don't do the cell phone thing like this. And, and she kept coming back and kept coming back. And then I'd be in touch with you, and we would, we would talk a little bit. And then you'd sometimes text me. And here's the deal. Here's the deal about this girl. All I asked when I helped, started helping with the senior high, I said, what I want you to do, and Mitch, you can say this verbatim, I want you to connect to God because the closer you get to him, the closer you're going to know who you are. And I said, then I want you to connect to other people, okay? This girl took all of that serious, and I watched her from her freshman year until now. Get a hold of the hem of the garment of God. Along for the ride, but more than that, she stepped into leadership and she has helped a lot of people know God better just because of her life and her acceptance of them. You took me serious on that. And you're one, you're one of the ones that you've been so special. Just, and you've come to camp with us. And I've watched your faith grow, girl. I've learned stuff from you. And I just want you to know how sincerely and deeply proud <laughs> I'm so proud of you, and I can't wait to see what God has put on your heart. So ladies and gentlemen, she, she has a whole row of friends over here who have come here. That's, that's Lauren. So let's just start softly. Lauren, Lauren, okay. Lauren, <laughs> Lauren. Take it away, girl. It's all yours. You, you can have this. Oh, I, oh you've right got here. that. So okay. let's give it up for Lauren, all right? <laughs> okay. Hello everyone, my name is Lauren Castor. I'm a senior at Century High School, and today I'm gonna to be sharing a few ways that God's been working in my life lately. One of the biggest ways I've noticed God working in my life has been through one of my passions, swimming. My faith has played a significant role in my athletic career in swimming, giving me a strength and a sense of calmness before each race. I've come to believe God's presence is with me in the pool and during dry land training. He has given me the strength to overcome physical obstacles such as the shoulder injury I've been dealing with. I'm still dealing with thoracic outlet syndrome, and it has become super challenging to perform at a healthy level. But with God's strength and guidance, I can keep my eyes focused on him and not worry about the setbacks the injury gives me. Not only does God's presence strengthen me, but it quiets my nerves when the pressure is on. The words of Philippians 4.13 connect deeply within me, reminding me that through Christ's strength, I can surpass challenges that come my way, whether it be an injury, the mental hurdles of training, or a competition. Another way that God's been working through my life is through Bible camp. I've been attending Bible camp my whole life. I started at a camp here in North Dakota, but then my amazing Inspire family convinced me to go to Camp Nevoidak in South Dakota. Camp Nevoidak wasn't even a comparison to other Bible camps. It was so much more than a Bible camp that I attended. It was a home away from home. 
During my time at camp, I experienced a connection to God through nature by seeing God's creation and being surrounded by it. I was able to be away from the world's distractions. I've witnessed God's work through others at camp by watching and learning about the ways that he's changed others' lives, from acts of kindness and compassion to moments of genuine worship and fellowship. I saw his love reflected in the lives of those around me. It was a powerful reminder that God's presence is not confined to the wilderness that was around me, but it can be found in a community of believers as well. While at camp, I never felt the need to be or act a certain way. I could always be myself. I was crazy and energetic all week long. For example, we were playing capture the flag, and I was given a bandana, so obviously I was going to wear it like an idiot and cover my whole face with it. And um, I was really determined to win this game, so I needed a strat so they wouldn't know what team I was on. But as you all know, uh, I don't do well running in the dark. And next thing you know, I was on the gravel with a bleeding knee and face. I ran into the tree. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kate, and then Kate like pulled out her phone and started taking pictures and just laughed at me. And then Aspen just continued to stand there and just didn't say anything. But um, throughout the fun, silly, fun, silly games and moments I experienced with everyone at camp, there was a huge sense of stillness the entire week. Camp guided me to understand and feel this verse truly. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. Psalms 46, 10. These experiences and the opportunities I was given to grow my faith reinforced my trust in God's plan. God is still working in my life and I will continue to trust him, but not all the time is it easy. I encountered one of the biggest challenges in my life in just the past two months. But going through this only strengthened my faith. One of my biggest challenges was saying goodbye to my best friend, Madison. Okay, I get it. Maddie has been a part of my life since freshman year, but it feels like I've known her my entire life. We both swam and attended school together and have been inseparable since the day we met. Until one day, we were unexpectedly torn apart. Just in the last two months, God has tested me in many ways. Most ways were completely unexpected. Around December, my best friend went through a hard mental battle and tried to end her life. She found the help she needed here in Bismarck, but I still had no contact with her while she was hospitalized. It was a very long, challenging process just trying to figure out how to deal with these things within the school community and learning how to do things on my own for a little bit and how to be there for her. While she was in treatment, I had never felt so alone. Without having the person that I loved deeply, I was lost, confused, and sad, and angry all at the same time. Without this, um, I asked God why, and I prayed and prayed to give strength to not only myself, but to my best friend, as we were both navigating through this new normal. After a couple of weeks went by, I got the news that she was discharged from the hospital, but within the same phone call, my heart was completely shattered when I um, learned that she was le leaving and moving to Maryland that same day, and I had to say goodbye to her at the airport. From endless days of being together to not graduating with each other or finishing our club swimming degree career together, Having our last prom together and all of the big things we had planned, we had to continue to trust God's plan and understanding his ways are only to prosper us and lead us in the right direction. Every day I miss my best friend more and more, but as time goes by, we get closer and closer to seeing each other again. And it's giving us this huge sense of hope. We will both be attending Grand Canyon University together and we'll be together once the school year ends. But for now, I keep my faith strong and give it to God. My best friend is now doing better mentally physically and emotionally. Maddie has finished school online and has been working on getting better, and I have been growing my faith and getting used to this new normal without her. Without leaning on God's faithfulness, we both wouldn't be where we are today. I still have moments of sadness and loneliness, but in these moments, I have find comfort in scriptures like Isaiah 41.10, which reminds me that God is always with me, upholding me with his righteous right hand. Through these trials, I've learned to trust in him, recognizing that his ways are higher than mine and that his timing is always perfect. I know God is not done working in both of our lives and through this process, but this challenge has made me appreciate every small moment I have with the people and the love I've been surrounded by. These trials have pushed me to pray more, ask more questions, and fully give my life to God. All right. Can you believe I left my coffee up here? I'm Sorry not surprised. about that. It's okay. <laughs> 
All right, Lauren, I'm going to have you go ahead and kneel. And uh, as she does that, I'm going to invite first uh, family that have come to come and gather around her. And once they've done that, then I'm going to invite any other friends that would like to also come up and lay hands on Lauren. What we are doing now is Lauren is, has started with her story and is confessing her faith. She was baptized, and now she's saying to God, I intend to continue to walk with you. That relationship you started with me when I was baptized, i got to get through here too, you know. <laughs> okay, thank you, Ernie. <laughs> um, she's saying yes to that. The prayer that we're doing now goes back over 2,000 years. It's called the prayer of chrismation. It just means that we're praying for charisma, the gifts of the Holy Spirit to fill her as she moves forward in this walk with Jesus. And so Lauren joins not just the believers here in, in outwardly confessing her faith, she, believes, she joins believers all throughout history when she does this. Lauren, you have made a public profession of your faith. And I do want to stress the word public. Lauren, do you intend to continue in the covenant that God made with you when you were baptized to live among God's faithful people, to hear his word and live by it, to share in his supper, Holy Communion, to proclaim the good news of God in Jesus Christ through your words and through your actions and how you love people, to serve people following the example of the Lord Jesus and to strive for the justice and peace that his kingdom will bring in its fullness even now. If so, answer, I do and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Lauren the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in her serving. And as she seeks your calling for her life, give her patience in suffering as you already clearly have. And bring her to everlasting life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, we're going to invite Lauren to go to the baptismal font. When we baptize children here, I dip my finger in the water and make the sign of the cross as a sign of God's covenant. And what our confirmation students do, and what Lauren is doing, is completing the circle now by dipping her own finger in the water on her own choice and saying yes to Jesus the rest of her life. And when she does this, by the way, I don't know if you're a guest here, we make a really big deal of this, okay? So I expect you to live up to that, okay, Lauren? Say yes. Congratulations, Lauren Castor. <laughs> Woo! Sometimes I'm not sure who it's a bigger moment for, for, for the young person being confirmed or for their family and their parents. I cried like a baby when my boys were confirmed. It's such a meaningful and wonderful moment. We should never underestimate the power that comes upon us through the Holy Spirit when we are willing to stand up and confess Jesus in front of the world. People are often scared when that moment comes and they're not sure what to do or how to say it, but they just push through and God provides immense assurance and power for the moment. And um, He just works in such amazing ways. Your story about 
working through difficulties in sports and your physical challenges that go with that. And you can't be in sports at any kind of high level without encountering that at some point. Reminds me of just, I see it almost as a metaphor for our life in Christ in this time, on this earth, before we die and are with Christ in paradise, and until that day that he returns in the great resurrection of all things and makes all things new. But right now, we live in this life that's full of those ups and downs and challenges. Um, She mentioned camp. Uh, Back in the day when I was a younger man, and Ernie was a little bit younger man, uh, we didn't do camp. Ernie and I and several, actually, of our people here, um, including some of our staff, we, we didn't do camp. We did something called mission trips. And uh, I remember one particular mission trip we did. It was called the Magical Mystery Tour. What that meant was we piled about 25 kids into a couple of vans, and they had no idea for the next eight days where we were going. Thus, the mystery. And old people recognize the name. It's an old Beatles tune, the Magical Mystery Tour or album or whatever. So what happens is the kids would get a letter from us every day with clues as to where we were going and what we were going to be doing that day. And they never knew day to day what was, what was going on. Well, towards the end of that mission trip, and we were mostly in South Dakota, actually, um, towards the end of that mission trip, uh, I, I believe it was this one, we gathered uh, together, and one of the students at the time approached me, and he said, I'd like to do a little team building, a little bonding with everybody tonight when we gather as a group. I said, really? Okay, what did you have in mind? And he said, I would like you to give us, like, get about 10 of us together and do, like, a quiz, And the winners get prizes. And the last place person, the person who does the worst on the quiz, you're going to shave their head. You remember this? Yeah. But here's here's the catch. The person who had the idea was Tim Pesky. And he said, I want you to give me the hardest questions, and at the end, I want you to shave my head. But I don't want you to tell anybody else. So we got about 10 of them together, and everybody else is watching, and so we would ask like one kid, uh, John, tell me one of the four Gospels. And usually you can name one, Matthew. Okay, very good. And, and Jenny, tell me... Um, who, who was it that uh, led the Israelites to the Red Sea? Oh, well, it was Moses. Okay. And then I would look at Tim and I'd say, Tim, tell me the third king of the second dynasty <laughs> who did such and such and such and such and what year it was. And, he, and he, he would play it up. He'd be like, what? Why did I get that question, you know? And so ultimately it kept going around. And every time we got to Tim, he would get like this super, super hard question, and he would just play it up, right? And everybody's laughing, you know, they just think this is funny. And at the end, we're like, oh, no, Tim lost. We got to shave Tim's head. You were in on this. Yeah. So here's the, here's the interesting part of the story. So we're, we're, we're team building. We're bonding together, you know, and, and having fun with this. And we sit Tim in the middle of the circle, and everybody's gathered around, and we got a Clippers. I don't know why we had one, but we had one. And, uh, and we began to shave his head. He had a fair amount of hair. And, um, and we shaved every hair off that head. It wasn't like Mr. Clean Bald, but, but it was nearly that. And, you know, I loved him, but I, he was not better looking as a result of that. <laughs> well, he's a good-looking guy, but that didn't help him. And I say that because a lot of us, we just don't look better when you do that, okay? 
And so we thought that was the end of it. But it wasn't. There was one guy in the group. I'm not going to say his full name, but his first name was Joe. Joe lost his mind. He lost his mind. As we started to, in strips, shave the hair off of Tim, Joe started to turn beet red. And he's like, what are you doing? How can you do that? You shouldn't be doing that. And then another strip. And he's like, what are you doing? And at the end, he is just beet red and he's starting to cry. He cannot believe that we are doing this to Tim. He's just losing his mind. So it's like, oh my gosh, you know what? Um, everybody go get a drink or something. Joe, stay here with me and Tim and Ernie. And so they do. And, and we're like, we got to let Joe in on this. Or he's, he's going to like, he's gonna, his head's going to explode. So we sit Joe down with like, Joe, 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 Joe. I know this looks like this is disturbing to you. But it was actually all part of a plan. Just to have fun and to do a little team building. Did Joe believe us? Nope. He did not believe me. He got even more angry. And so it's like, okay, ask Tim. Ask Tim. And Tim's like, yeah, dude. It was like my idea. It was like my idea to do it. Joe would not believe Tim. He was so worked up that he wouldn't believe the truth even when it was told directly to him about why this had happened. <laughs> oh, Joe. Um, I thought of that a little bit because if Joe just would have believed us, he would have been able to make sense of what just happened in front of him and seen the bigger picture and actually enjoyed himself, right? But he refused to. And to this day, I'm pretty sure Ernie and I would agree, we don't understand at all why he would not believe any of us. He just must have thought we were evil or something. I don't know what it was. And here's the thing. When we live our lives, whether you're a really young, young person in here today or you're Lauren's age, and by the time you get to be Lauren's age, you will have already experienced some ups and downs in life. You will have experienced disappointments, failures, betrayals, um, maybe even tragedies of some sort. You will probably have lost somebody to death. And as you get older, it happens more and more and more. And then when you get to my age or Ernie's age, now you're not just managing kids and grandkids, but you're helping to manage your parents and their age. And, and you have a life where it's like super high contrast. You have awesome, amazing, beautiful things happening. And at the same time, you have really heartbreaking things happening, light and darkness together. And if I had to navigate that and try and figure out why all on my own, I too would lose my mind like Joe. But unlike Joe, I've chosen, and Lauren tonight has chosen, to believe the one who has said, hey, sometimes in life things are going to happen that you don't see coming and you might not even understand. And in those moments when you don't understand my mind, God says, trust my heart. Wouldn't you agree with me that none of us have the capacity to know God's mind? No. I look at my little puppy dog. It'd be like me trying to teach my puppy dog the internet. <laughs> She's pretty smart for a dog, but that ain't happening. You know what I'm saying? We can't know. God, God says my ways are so much higher. And there are going to be times when things happen. And we're not going to understand why. But I've learned, 
and Lauren tonight is confessing that she's learned that no matter what life throws at us, I trust the one who gives that life. And I trust the one who knows. And I trust his heart again, even when I don't understand his mind. That sounds like a neat little saying, but here's what I'm going to tell you. And I'm not the oldest person in the room, but I'm getting there. I'm 57. Ernie's 98. And, uh, yeah, okay. Um, ask an older person in here who has walked with Jesus as long as we have. That's, that phrase is so true, you guys. Trust his heart when you don't understand. And he'll get you through. And you won't have to lose your mind. You'll have peace in the turbulence. You'll have peace. Ernie and I on Saturday buried a 74-year-old woman. Two-year battle with cancer. And when we met, went to meet with her several times as she was dying, she had absolute and utter peace. Because she believed Jesus. She believed his promises. She believed that the one who rose from the dead can be trusted. And thus she believed that when that moment came, when her body gives its last breath, her soul would meet the Lord. And um, I want that for all of us. Man, when you have that kind of peace, nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. Lauren, you received the gifts of the Holy Spirit tonight. You, maybe you didn't feel it necessarily. Maybe you did. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's a promise. And the Spirit has filled you. And some of those gifts may become apparent to you right away. Maybe you're already exercising it, but I promise you there are some gifts that are now planted as seeds that are going to emerge later. They will. And you'll even be surprised perhaps by what they are. But that same spirit that gives you gifts is living in you and living in all of us who confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts that Jesus is Lord. And that same spirit keeps us and gives us, as the Bible says, the peace that passes all understanding no matter what happens. Peace be still. Isn't that what the song said? Be still and know I am God. When we trust the one who is the source of life, we don't need to fear anything else, not even the moment of death. With him, nothing is lost, amen? Amen. And there's only everything to be gained. Let's pray. Father in heaven, what a privilege it is to see Lauren grow. And it is, it's just an absolute privilege and honor. And I'm always amazed at what you can do to somebody who's just willing to turn to you and say, yes, I want you, Lord. I need you to save me, and I want, I want my life to be yours. Take it and use it as you want. And what an amazing thing it is to see somebody actually find who they are the moment they give themselves back to you. <sighs> so awesome. So awesome. As we conclude tonight with worship, we give all of who we are to you. And we know that in the ups and downs, we just need to believe you no matter what happens. And all will be well. We pray this in the name of Jesus the only unique Son of God of whom there is no one else like Him. 
keep us mindful of that as we move into Holy Week next week. Good Friday. And then the earth-shaking event of his Easter. Fill our hearts tonight. In Jesus' name, all God's people said.